<laughs> hello, hello my lovely friends and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing a flip through <laughs> of my enormous happy mail junk journal. Oh boy. Um so this is this is what we're going to have a look at today. Um you know, I'm I'm starting to think that I have some issues with like space and understanding you know, room and space, because this did not go in any way <laughs> how I anticipated it to go. I mean, I'm very happy with how this turned out. But let me tell you, uh, I had, I started off this project with totally different <laughs> vision than what this really turned out to be. So I, I made a little video. I'm kind of glad that I, I have it documented just how ridiculous my original idea was. So first things first, let's talk about the fact that um, why I wanted to make a Happy Mail junk journal. Now I have a ton of happy mail because I'm very privileged and lucky to have some really wonderful, creative, and, and like just really talented pen pals, right? And so for the longest time, I kept everything in a box. And in fact, I kept them in these, bo whoop, whoop, these boxes here. And you know, this kind of was convenient, but it also bothered me because I was like, you know, these women put a lot of time and energy into what I consider to be actual works of art. And I was like, you know, having them in a pretty box just doesn't do them justice. And this was, I would say, a good year or so ago where I started to, you know, I was like, there has to be a better way to compile our happy mail, enjoy the happy mail. So in the order of, or in the interest of, coming up with a better solution, I created a really, <laughs> a really dull and boring um, scrapbook, for lack of a better word. And I did, I did take a photo of it, which I will put here. And sort of in my brain at that time, I was thinking, okay, well, I'm going to put everything on this gray paper, because all the colors and the things and the envelopes and the postcards will that all those intense colors will pop, right? And I glued stuff in and I knew as I was doing it, I was not happy. I was like, this isn't any better than putting everything in a way in a box. But these things are a bit of a process, right? Like you sort of, you get from, you start at point A and you get to point B and there's <laughs> this sort of messiness in between as you sort of figure out and then you have, you know, these light bulb moments about how you want to store these things. And I had that book in the other room on a shelf, and it bothered me. Every time I went into that room, I knew that these gorgeous works of art were sitting on a shelf in a, in a book that I certainly was not proud of by any stretch of the imagination. Because it was literally grey paper put together with a spiral-bound... Um, spiral <laughs> and every I just it was just one of those things that haunted me you know it was like Lisa <laughs> we deserve better and um and I you know yes you did deserve better you know like I have things like you know like this right like just just beautiful cards and and I mean, I could I could talk forever about what Happy Mail and pen pals and things mean to me. Um, I don't think there's anything quite like getting something in the mail that somebody's made by hand with the intention that it's for you. Okay, I'm going to go off on a little Happy Mail tangent here for a minute. You know, and you get this in the mail and you're like, oh, for me, right? Like there's, I don't want to put too fine of a point on it. But one of, in my opinion, one of the greatest pleasures in life is when you open up your mailbox and there's this beautifully colored envelope and you can just 
you just feel the energy in your body shift and you're like, oh, poor moi, <laughs> could I be so deserving? And it doesn't have to be that it's this perfect piece of happy mail, but the fact that there's a piece of happy mail in your mailbox is just, there's something, I don't want to know if I, is primal the right word, but it touches a part not only in your brain, but in your heart where you're like, wow, somebody did something really nice for me. And they, how do I say this? And I didn't ask them to. Do you know what I mean? These are the small pleasures in life that really are, are meant to be cherished. This is the kind of thing that makes the world go round, in my opinion. Um, so I, I really, I get very emotional about this kind of thing because I do really feel that you can change, you can really change somebody's day if, if they open up their mailbox and they get a postcard because it's the small things. It doesn't have to be, oh, hey, I bought you a car, <laughs> you know, it's more like, hey, I was thinking about you and it's this, this sort of connection where you realize that the person took the time to to purchase a postcard or or an envelope or something that they thought you would really enjoy they took the time to write the message on it they took the time to put a stamp on it and they took the time to go to the mailbox or post office it's about the fact that somebody invested their time into you and these days and this is where i sort of feel like there's a primal component to this is that when somebody puts time into us, it, it's a feeling that isn't, it's hard to quantify because you're just like, there's this sense of value, right? Especially when it's something that you didn't ask them to do. I, I don't know how to say it and I don't want to go off on a huge tangent about it, but I, I believe in the power in snail mail in a real, real big way because you know there's there's such a, a connection between the person that's doing the mailing and giving knows how much the person is going to enjoy receiving it and the person that receives it just is like wow this person went out of their way for me this person was thinking of me this person did something nice for me and that just, you know, it's warm fuzzies all around, right? So, this was part of my issue with having the snail mail in the very boring book with the, on the gray pages. I mean, in my defense, I thought gray would be neutral and it would feel like I would look at these things and be like, oh, the color, pop, 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 pop. And then later I was like, no, I think it's kind of depressing that I put this... Happy mail. Sorry, I feel like this is jingling and making noise here. Um, I feel like it's a little bit depressing that I put it on gray paper, like it's in happy mail jail, <laughs> you know? So, I had I made this little deal with myself that once I was done with the journal making of the new moons, or the moon journals and the cat journals, that gray book in the room on the shelf was calling my name and I was like okay when I get done with these journals I'm going to allow myself the time to dig out and redo a book for my happy mail so that's what I did this week now I'm not I'm not gonna lie at one point I did think maybe I just need a nicer scrapbook so I went online and I looked around and I was looking at some 12 by 12 books because I thought, well, this will be a little faster. It'll be a little bit easier. And then I was like, no, <laughs> stop. That's the same mistake that you made before. You know, the idea is that you want to create, meaning me, I want to create a journal and spend some time with the happy mail. I know it sounds a little corny and it sounds a little bit weird. And maybe it is, I don't know. But the idea was I would create a journal and then I would spend the time with my pen pals while I'm redoing, um, I'm not redoing, but, but reconnecting with their art, their work, 
their words. And I have to say that this, this, so this took me three days. And it was a glorious three days. I had, I really didn't think it was going to take me that long. I was like, I'll do this in a couple hours. <laughs> That's when I, when I say that I have this weird, I, I somewhere in my brain, I have a space time continuum misunderstanding that doesn't, that doesn't add up. But it was a wonderful, wonderful three days and a great way to connect with 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 women and people who have been a big part of my life or a small part of my life over the past few years um and it, it was it was extremely comforting it was extremely soothing and relaxing there was a real cathartic point um to this and i think that this was something that i really needed especially after spending um, the enormous amount of time that I did making the cat journals and the moon journals. I, I sort of go through these manic phases when I create the journals. When I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. And I sort of set up myself in such a way that I get a ton of stuff done before. Because I, once, I, once I get into journal making mode, that's it. Nothing else happens. There's no vacuuming. There's no dusting. There's no cleaning. We're very lucky if the dishes end up in the dishwasher. Like, I just, I focus, I, it's tunnel vision. <laughs> it's tunnel journal vision. And I just go like crazy. And I'm happy. And I'm, I'm really in the zone. But, you know, as I crunch my way into the kitchen because I hadn't vacuumed or swept the floor in many, many, many days, um... It's intense. I realize it's quite intense and I, I don't really leave the house much. I don't respond to emails and messages as, as quickly as I should. I don't get into Instagram and, you know, say, hi, Cheryl. <laughs> if you're watching, hi, Cheryl. I'm really sorry again. Um, you know, and, and that's why I said in the last video, to those of you who are like, where is she? She's not responding. You know, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just in sort of a manic um, journal making phase. So after all of that, I, I really need something to sort of bring things down again and return sort of my heart rate and, and my blood pressure and everything else back to a, a manageable level. Um, and so this was a real labor of love. And we're going to do a flip through. Sorry, I've been yakking here for 13 minutes. Um, but, but what I didn't anticipate was really having these this lovely sort of emotional connection with women that, you know, 99% of these women in my pen pals, I don't, I don't know them in, in real life. I've never met them in person. But my goodness, um, how touched I was by their generosity of spirit, their generosity of their words, their generosity of their time, and the generosity of their sheer talent. You know, like, I just, I sometimes, again, I, I don't want to sound weird or, you know, overly dramatic, but some days I'm just like, how did I get to be so lucky to have such amazing women in my life, such talented women? I, I, you know, my cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. And, and the other thing was that um, it was a great perspective because, you know, sometimes we get into, woe is me. I know I do. Woe is me. My life, meh. this, meh. everything, meh. <laughs> right? And this was a great reset for me because I was like, yeah, sometimes things are crappy. And yes, I, there's been a lot of struggles over the last few weeks for, for various reasons. You know, there's insecurities, there's shame sometimes, there's confused feelings, there's anger, there's resentment, there's disappointment. Oh, oy vey. <laughs> disappointment. There's letdowns, there's the, it, the whole gamut, right? But then you go and you do a project like this and you're like, 
it is a reset. You're like, okay, there is all of those things, and those things need to be addressed. But my goodness, at the same time, there's also just how grateful I am to have been connected with just just some real generous, kind, beautiful souls. Um, and then, yeah, some days I'm like, then I was like, I am really in a, I'm very lucky and very blessed. And so this turned out to be not just something that I loved because it was about cut and paste and glue and, and <laughs> creating a journal. Ooh, I have to go way back, you know, weighs about 10 pounds. Um, along the way, you know, people come and go. People don't necessarily are stick around forever, but... Um, along the way, I have been so blessed to have, like I said, such amazing souls in, in my life. And um, they've all taught me something. And I've learned, you know, whether it's big or small, all of these women have made an, an amazing impression on my life. Um, you know, people will tell you that snail mail is dead and that it's all about electronics and electronic you know, and I even say on my website, you know, I love an instant message as much as the next person. I love a quick text because it can save time. It's to the point. You're like, oh, my dad doesn't have a, a, a smartphone. And sometimes I get very frustrated because I'm like, damn it, I just want to text him and I can't because he doesn't have a phone. And I'm like, oh, God, I got to call him, <laughs> you know, which is a terrible way to think. And so we all get, we've all been very, you know, sometimes I say we've been seduced by this technology on an epic level because it is fast, it's immediate. You're like, yeah, I'm just going to text you and da 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 da, da. Um, And those things certainly have its place. But to come back full circle, snail mail and happy mail and being connected with people on a physical level through the mail is, is, it's just such a treat and such a bonus. So anybody that tells you that snail mail and, and sending cards and letters is dead, don't believe them. It's alive and well. And, you know, for the price of a stamp, you can really make a difference to somebody's day. Um, because they could be having a totally crappy day and then they go to their mailbox. And again, they're like, oh, for me? <laughs> and from far away, you're saying yes, yes, for you. Okay, so, <laughs> um, now that, now that I got my, my philosophy out of the way, I, so, what's today? Today's Sunday. So, Thursday, I was like, all right, I'm not going to buy a pre-made journal scrapbook on Amazon. You, you got a ton, a ton of paper, make something up. So, I dug out a bunch of scrapbook paper that I wasn't super keen about or was a little bit boring. Oh, somebody's having a bath. Lucy. <laughs> Lucy's having a little bath. Um, so I got out some scrapbook paper that I wasn't super keen on. And I thought, this is a great way to use scrapbook paper that I'm not super keen on. Because I'm going to be covering it up, right? And then I, what I thought I would do is I was going to make one journal but with two signatures. And so again, I took some video and I will put it here as I'm sort of describing what's going on. So in my brain, I thought, okay, this is going to get pretty chunky and I'm going to need a lot of space. So let's put the two signatures together. And I'm going to give myself quite a bit of room in the, in the middle for this thing to sort of have this V. Somebody wrote to me the other day and said she wasn't keen on gator journals. I had never heard that term before. I thought that was kind of interesting. So of course what she's referring to is this, right? And I was like, oh, interesting. I, I, had, I, don't, I don't know if that's a common term and I just missed the boat. But anyways, I knew that this journal was bound to have a gator effect, if you will. And I thought, well, so I'm going to I'm going to cut the cover open. I'm going to make it super wide to be accommodating. I'm going to have my two signatures in here and then we'll we'll stitch them in with the three-hole pamphlet stitch. 
And I knew I had quite a bit of happy mail that I wanted to work with. And I thought, oh, this is gonna work out fine. This, this gives me a ton of space. It's gonna be perfect. Well, as you can tell, by the time I got to the end of it, I was like, this, this is so not gonna work. So I ended up taking the other signature out and just ended up with this one big chunky journal. And then I'll show you when I turn the camera around, but I ended up taking that other second signature and I turned it into its own journal with two signatures because I still have more Happy Mail um, that I'm going to put in um, this one. But, I mean, you know, it gets ridiculous. Like, you can't even... You can't even work in it. It's so big. So we'll see. This will be an interesting experiment. Um, so I've got these two journals, or sorry, these two signatures, and I think how many pages? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I put six of the scrapbook paper in each of these. So what I'm going to do is today, I'm going to quit my yapping. We're going to do a quick flip through of this one. Then I still have some happy mail to go. So then what I'll do this week is I will do, I'll show you how I'm actually using the happy mail. Like we'll just do a journal with me video. Um, I do have some pieces in here as already done, but I'll do a journal with me video, show you how I'm using the envelopes and all that kind of stuff and what I'm doing. And then we'll kind of see where we get and how this works out, if this is any better Meaning, you know, if this gives me more room, right? I hope that makes sense. So, without any further ado, because holy cow, 22 minutes. Um, I could just talk to you forever. <laughs> just like that, da, 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 da. But anyways, let's turn the camera around and let's start the flip through and um, see what happy mail I put inside. I'll be right back. Okie dokie, friends. Is this even going to fit in the... I think so. Okay, <laughs> so my criteria for putting this together was, I only had one sort of image in my brain, and that was the idea that I wanted to basically junk journal with my happy mail the way that I would junk journal with uh, anything else, right? So that was my thing. With the other book that I had, I basically just glued everything in it in a very traditional way. You know, you glue the envelopes in, and then you put the cards in, and this was, I was like, I want to do something different. And I did do some Googling and looking around about what how other people were storing their Happy Mail and what they were doing with it. And I have to say that I, I found some great storage ideas, but I wasn't, I, it wasn't what I was trying to to emulate or trying to do, right? So, um, now let's see, let's just make sure I'm in here. So what I did was on the cover, I, I had a couple envelopes that I've been saving that I absolutely loved, loved, loved. This is from, I believe from Sophie in France. And then this is from Judith in Australia. I love this stamp here. And you will see that I have post-it notes over everything and that is to conceal uh, the address of uh, my home and um, also the people who sent me the happy mail look at this like I can <laughs> hardly I'm like oh maybe I should flip it around hang on let's see if I go like this maybe yeah this this will be better let's do it like this this was um, an envelope from a pen pal in Russia and I love Russian stamps. So what I did was I used Aileen's tacky glue a lot in this. And I used it watered down. And I found that it really gave some extra stiffness. Can you hear that? To the cover and to other parts of the journal. Even though it makes the paper a little bit wet and wrinkly, I actually found that I really enjoyed that. So I will say I used more of the Aileen's, um, I'll show a, a picture of it here, the Aileen's heavy duty glue 
um, watered down, so say like mm, maybe two thirds glue, one third water, and then just brushed it on, and it I really liked it. And it I like the texture of some of this paper that has the glue underneath it. I wouldn't necessarily use it for other things, but I was happy with with how it worked out here. Okay, so. I got some little notes here from my pen pal Anna in Portugal and then I saved a whole bunch of the stickers off of her envelopes and then just sort of randomly added the stickers in the stamps to her notes. Um, okay, so then on this side I've got a really great envelope from Judith in Australia. So I just opened it up and then I cut pieces of washi tape from other parts of other envelopes and then I just glued those in there so that it had this really nice full floral look on the page. And then here is, I just tucked one of the letters from her there. This, um, okay, so what have I got? So this is an envelope that I glued with the two-way tape just around here. So I could use this as the tuck spot for the valentine that she sent me. And then I left this part open. So this is from my pen pal Lisa in Texas. And this was the envelope that this came in. So I just wanted to have that there as a reminder that, that, that these two things were connected. So. As I started this, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I just I just started, right? So you sort of see as we go through, I get a little bit more creative with how I get things in the journal as opposed to just gluing down the envelopes and then sticking the corresponding cards with the envelope. Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. I just was trying to be a little bit more creative in how I was basically presenting the happy mail. So I have a wonderful pen pal Stephanie who you can see is an absolute sticker fanatic. Nobody nobody stickers up an envelope like Stephanie and so I decided to sort of pay homage to Stephanie's artwork here and and just how many this is three different the backs of three different envelopes of hers that I put together and then of course I didn't want to cover up um, her amazing sticker power. <laughs> so I just left that there. Um, this is from a post-crossing uh, pen pal that I had. And I, underneath here though, is another envelope from another pen pal. So this went with this and his stamp and everything here from his envelope. But this envelope went with this letter and then I just tucked this in underneath here. I decided that what he'd put on the back wasn't something that I necessarily needed to save because I didn't really know who he was. But of course, I love the image and I love that he put his face on the back of his envelope. So that just went all together there. And then this is an envelope from my friend Terry. And I loved her use of stamps here. So I just sort of folded it over and underneath here is the letter that she included. This is a postcard from somebody else, but I just liked how the colors all went together. So that goes there. And then this is some washi tape from Judith in Australia, but I loved how it went together. And then these are stickers from Anna in um, Portugal. But it all sort of went together. So this is where I was sort of like, you know what I want to do? I want to combine elements of different envelopes and sort of color coordinate them and go with again that sort of more uh, junk journal idea where you're mixing and matching things right this was from a pen pal in the US and I, I mean I just look at that envelope it's just gorgeous what she did so then I just put tucked her letter in underneath there and that's got her address and name on the back there. And then this is a combination of a few people. So this, this blue page I glued down here. This is from Denise. 
and this was called reasons to S five reasons to send snail mail which is absolutely brilliant what's it say it's unexpected it draws out the experience it makes you think before you write it may be better for your brain aha uh -huh. it's more personalized so that went there and then these are elements from other people's journaling and then tucked underneath here is another letter from uh, Lisa in Texas and another part of the happy mail from Denise and this is an old birthday card um, from Sammy in England and then here on this side is another card from and a letter from Denise which I couldn't resist opening it up and then tucking it in the side there because oh my god how great is that right I love it I love it and this was the kind of thing I was like this shouldn't be hidden in an envelope this somewhere this should be on display so that when I'm flipping through it's right there and it looks amazing I love the colors I love the style I love everything about it then here on the other side I washied in another little postcard from my friend Anna and then I just attached another letter on the back there and so that I have sort of this writing here and I love the, the blues kind of go together so I, I decided to try and color coordinate a little bit with the washi the envelope and all that kind of stuff so then this is a little tip out another postcard from Anna and then this envelope here from Cindy in Florida this just kind of tucked in underneath there and then this is a letter uh, oh, from Cassandra. So I just sort of cut it open, stapled it, and then had it flip open so I could see her message there. And then that just gets tucked underneath there. And then in here we have, so this, uh, my, my friend Regina in the U.S., she just sends the most gorgeous envelopes and pen pal, or uh, happy mail. So this was a, a message, a letter from her with this envelope, which I've been saving forever because it's so beautiful. I love, love, love things written on old book pages. So I just created a pocket there. And then this is the front of another envelope from Katrine in Germany. And then these are postcards that came from Anna in Portugal. And I just tucked those all in there because I liked I like the little bits of red that poked out from the postcards and how it connected with the red on the label from Regina. And then of course Katrine's um, front of her envelope is green, which green and red are complement colors and um, I knew that I would have these bits and pieces of green over here. So then again another envelope and then I just made it into a, a pocket there so this is part of the original letter that came from Terry I think and then I love that she writes here oh my god I think this might be the ugliest envelope package I've ever sent <laughs> ha ha uh, what do you want for six o'clock in the morning so I had to, I had to honor her ugly envelope even though I don't think it was ugly at all but she made me laugh um, and then back in here are two other letters from envelopes that I did not save because um, they got pretty mangled. And then this was part of some happy mail that I got from Stephanie. So that just sort of covered up the top of the page. So I stuck those on, those letters in there. Terry's letters here. And we got everything connected there. And then on this side, we have more of Stephanie's amazing sticker artwork. And so I decided to keep the back of the envelope. And then what I did was I glued the card that she wrote onto the back of it. And then I just created a little envelope there. And that's a recipe for soup from Anna. And then here again is more of um, Stephanie's sticker artwork on her envelope. So I just thought that would, you know, fill in the blank page a little bit with the belly band. And then her stuff gets tucked in there. And then this is a cute little note out of one of Anna's um, Happy Mail envelopes. And then on this side I have an envelope from a woman 
um, out of California and um, this was the front of the envelope this was the back of the envelope this was the card that was included in this envelope and this was a card that I had received um, this week um, letting all of her pen pals know that sadly she'd passed away um, in January I'm gonna get a little of a glimpse here for a minute um, I knew that she'd had been fighting breast cancer, but I didn't realize um, that she she had managed to uh, have a courageous battle of 10 years. And for the first time, I found out her real name because as a pen pal, she only ever went through Ghost Pepper. And um, I had met her on Instagram. And so um, her letter, this one was from... 2022 April the 5th and so I just thought it was quite fitting that these two things go together and this stamp was from the envelope that this came in and so um, I know I have another a few other postcards from her so I'm gonna find those and I'll try and, and stick those so that everything from her um, goes together there then again this is from my friend Anna in Portugal and she'd sent me this brochure um, about where she lives and this was the customs form that was on the envelope and I just thought it would be fun to sort of have it peek out here um, I kind of made a bit of a tab with that and then these were three photographs that she had included in this particular envelope and so what I did was I put in a brad and so if you turn the photos up this way, this is the original, or sorry, this was one of the original photos, which I glued down, or at least I tried to. And then the brads allow me to move these photos like this and like this. So I can see the photos, because these were special because she had written in her, in, on her envelope, these photos were taken by me. So I made sure that I, I ripped that off the envelope and kept that there and then this was one of the stamps from her envelope and I just sort of used that there as a way of tucking the photo in underneath and it holding um, the photo in place so that was really fun and then did I make oh yeah I did I, I created a my washi tapes not sticking I created a pocket with this and then in here is the Easter card that she sent me this week so that just gets tucked in there. I gotta glue that down. Cause the washi's not holding. <laughs> Some days I do ask a lot of my washi tape, I have to say. And then here on this side, again, is a gorgeous, gorgeous envelope um, from Russia. A, a postcard from Anna. And this was a little polar bear that I ripped off of one of Anna's uh, envelopes. And then I just tucked a couple other postcards in there. So as I'm getting to this point here, I'm, I'm really trying to, you know, save certain aspects off of envelopes. I mean, I don't necessarily need to save all of the envelope, but I'm finding as I'm sort of getting into the swing of things, I'm enjoying um, really getting certain things out of the envelope and then because I had, I had you know read a few blog posts about what other women were doing um with their all their happy mail and the one woman talked a lot about putting things into piles because you can't you can't really keep everything and I was keeping everything I was keeping every envelope and 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 then I realized, well, it's not so much, I don't need to keep the whole envelope. I'm just really more attached to the stickers or the stamps. And then that was sort of my whole thing about, oh, so then I can have fun, you know, sort of collaging with the Happy Mail with the bits and pieces that are on their envelopes, right? Okay, so then here's another beautiful envelope from Marina in Russia. And again, because I loved her stamps, I loved the colors. So then I was able to dig through and find some happy mail from Denise that had these purple elements to it. And with this card from her as well for our friend anniversary. Hey, Denise, November 9th is our friend anniversary. <laughs> She's very sweet, and she always sends me the nicest 
um, bits and pieces from her travels in the US. So that's always fun. So this was part of the envelope that she had sent me. These are stamps from somebody else's envelope that I had torn apart. But again, I like the purples here and the purples went with Denise's envelope, the purples in her letter, and then the purples with the purple stamp uh, from Russia. And then this is part of Denise's other, um, another part from another happy mail there. And then on this side, we've got this purple um, envelope. I ripped the um, envelopes stapled them together so I could have the back of it. I think I just... Suzanne in England always has the most amazing envelopes and she decorates with washi tape and stamps and it, it's it's amazing and I love it. So every little piece of her envelopes I try and save. This was a thank you card that didn't have anything on the back so I just did the two-way tape and then stuck this card underneath and then this, of course, is Suzanne's letter out of this envelope. And this was more happy mail, literally, from Denise. And I just was, I don't think I really color coordinated anything here. But I have this envelope from Belarus, um, from a pen pal there. And then I just put in this card um, here from Judith. But I was looking for things sort of with a pinkish, light pastel colors. And then these are the two postcards that actually came in this envelope here. Again, I'm loving the stamps. I love, I just couldn't tear this envelope up. Same with this one from Denise here, where she had all the happy faces there. It's amazing to me that this got through the system um, as easily and without any real ripping and tearing. That was a real that was a real joy to find in the mail, I gotta tell you. And then here's another um, postcard letter from Suzanne. Happy Easter. I think this was from last year, the year before. 2020, 2021. Wow. Yeah. And then this was another beautiful envelope from Russia. And then I put the, her address underneath here, and this was part of what was on the back of this envelope. And so that's that, and then this is a little tip up here, and then this is a card uh, from a friend in the Czech Republic um, from 2006. Did I turn that into a pocket? No, no I did not. Now, this was a card from my friend Stephanie, an Edward Gorey card, because she knows of my love of Edward Gorey. But what I decided to do was I wanted to create a little tuck spot with it, so I cut the card apart. And, but I saved this. This this part, a one or two inch piece of string, cannot be used for anything. It was on the bottom here. Um, but for whatever reason, um, I cut this off, made my tip, tip out spot here, and then what I did was I glued this down except for the bottom. And this was a letter from an, uh, Sophie in France. So I had this tucked up underneath here, of course, because I love the look of the paper and how the colors sort of all went together. But this here, this is what Stephanie had actually written in this card. So I was able to save that there. And then this acts as an, another way of tucking that in there. And then this just gets tucked up underneath the card there. So it keeps it from flailing all over the place. And this is from Stephanie as well. And then this is a recent postcard from Judith in Australia. And I loved these colors together with the pink background. So that is her card there. This is a letter from another envelope in Russia. And because I was putting pinks together, I had this card from Anna. And then these I just wanted to, to keep together here. And these are stickers from other happy mail. This was a it was a stamp from another envelope from Judith and I just glued it on there so that it could be on the front and everything was kind of cute together. And then here, I'm just gonna open this up more like this here. Put that back there. 
This is a combination of a bunch of Happy Mail that I just put together. So I used some scrap paper to cover up the blank page here. This was a card uh, that I just used two-way tape to stick things underneath here. And then these are just some random cards um, that I didn't keep the envelope from. So this here, am I in, yes I am. So this was a postcard from Anna. And I cut it in half because I wanted to see the sticker of the woman. And I glued it or I taped it to this card here. <laughs> and anyways, it became this sort of tip out, flip out thing where I put this all together like this. And then this just gets flipped down and tucked in so that what we can see um, is this part of the card and again this was sort of color coordinating for me to put these all together like this and what I did too with a lot of the washi tape that's in here the washi tape is from swaps um, from pen pals or washi tape that pen pals have included in their happy mail then I have one of my all-time favorite happy mail envelopes that I've ever received um, this one's from Judith it just, oh my god, all the cats on here, and then the map. I love it. I love everything about it. So, I didn't want to cut or tear anything off of it, so I decided to just tape it in and use it as a, like, just create extra pages, right? So I put a little belly band here and tuck that underneath there. There's the front of it. And then because she had sort of the way she had folded it, there was this sort of extra piece of um, paper in it. So I took the letter that she had included and wrapped it around there. This was one of the postcards that she had in it. And so then I just created um, a tuck spot for another postcard from another pen pal there. So that turned out great. And then here, this is from Xenia in Russia. And then these are, po again, postcards. So we've got three here. So we've got this one from Stephanie. This is from Anna. And this is uh, from Marina in Russia. And again, I, I like the idea of sort of almost like creating a postcard waterfall kind of thing there. And this, this she, I just got a couple weeks ago. This is for Year of the Dragon. So again, I was just sort of, sort of, having a mishmash of colors and color coordinating there then here we are in the middle and then I just created a belly band uh, and then put these two cards here with Russian stamps up here and this in the middle here let's see where are we doing for time I think I better pick this up a little bit okay so then postcard here this is from Emma and so what I did was I cut off the front of the card. That's what she wrote in the card on the back. That just gets tucked in there. And that is from my friend Emily. And then this is a postcard. Oops. Here. Right. And then I just used the stamp from um, Suzanne to use as a way to hold down the postcard there. And that all gets tucked up in there. Here's a letter, and it was folded up, so I just put the two-way tape on the back. And then this is a birthday card from Denise, and I used the stamps um, from her envelope to sort of create a bit of a pull tab for that there. And of course, the pinks and the pinks and the pinks and the pinks. And then here's a card from Stephanie and some of the stickers, uh, no, this was from an, another envelope. So I just decided to put the two-way tape there and use this as a bit of a way to keep that tucked in underneath. Two-way tape on this card here, and that just gets tucked in there. And then these are from another envelope, and this was some of the stickers, like from some of this cute little Happy Mail. So at this point, then I'm like, okay, I need to start collaging or I want to start collaging and I want to start using bits and pieces that these women have actually included in 
they're happy now for me. Um, so then I started doing this sort of thing where I would put the envelope at the bottom, I would create a collage using bits and bobs, and then just sort of, again, try and sort of color coordinate. I mean, look how beautiful that is. It's just, just amazing. Suzanne, you're a genius if you're watching. You really are. So yeah, so then I really started to have a lot of fun with just creating collage work that sort of complemented the Happy Mail that I was going to be including um, on each page, right? So here, obviously, I'm working with reds and greens and a little bit of pink. Here, I'm trying to go more of a yellowy color. So I, I took the washi tape off of other envelopes, and um, the washi tape that I couldn't get off, I just ripped from the envelope with the stamp. And yeah, same up here. And then just created a tuck spot there underneath that card. This is from Jana, or Jana, sorry. I always want to say the J a different way. A postcard that she sent me, there was nothing on the back of that. So I was like, okay, perfect, tuck spot. This is the, this was the, the zine, the beautiful zine that she had done. So that gets in tucked in there with her card. And then again, using the elements from different Happy Mail, here's some stamps up here, and some bits and bobs in washi that people had included uh, in their washi, washi for me, or in the Happy Mail. This is a map that Anna had sent me from Portugal, so I just decided to glue the whole thing in there. And then I didn't. I did, decided I didn't want to cover it up. So it's just like that. I love this. This is amazing. I love this kind of thing. So this was perfect. Okay, now let's flip this around like this. So again, I'm working on some sort of color co coordinating collage. We've got bits and pieces of ephemera that people had sent me and different little stickers and stamps. So I had a lot of fun just sort of putting all of this stuff together and creating a nice collage. This came from Terry. She sent me a happy mail about snail mail, which was really fitting, <laughs> right? And then we've just got the little card from Russia there. This, this little book page came um, from uh, Anique in, in the Netherlands. This was a postcard from Post Crossing. And then I put it on a brad there, thinking that I would be able to move it around, but it doesn't move as well as I anticipated. But I still think it looks cool. So that's that. And then on this side, um, I was color cording with some blacks, different cards that I had. So this was... Again, I think I met this, this is from Instagram. So I have this piece of paper in Happy Mail. So that became a pocket. It's a card from my friend Stephanie. Um, so I just put the two-way tape there. And then this was out of a Happy Mail from Denise. And that was from, I think, Xenia in Russia. And then those just get tucked in there. Oh, wait, I missed a page. What's this one? Hang on. So this was a postcard from my Auntie Mary to my parents. I think this was 1966 when my parents lived, when, after they'd first gotten married. So that was fun to have. And this was a card from a long time ago. And I had made this pocket here, which doesn't want to stick down. Story of my life. This came off the front of an envelope. Gorgeous tag from Suzanne. Thought that looked really cute there. This was sort of a girly page that I did, and I got these great postcards from France. So I had to put the Vogue, of course, and this is just a little tuck spot here. And this tips up like that. There was nothing on the back of this postcard. This came from Terry, I believe, to match stockings. Save all your mismatched stockings, put in a pot of water with a teaspoon of salt. Bring to a boil, let cool, rinse. You will find that your stockings are all the same color. <laughs> I'm going to have to give that a try at some point. 
Okay, so that's the one we just talked about. Again, this is from Denise. So I was sort of working with the black and white theme here. And then this was from another, um, obviously, Happy Mail. That's from Terry. This air mail I ripped off of the bottom of this um, here. And then I just decided to keep the stamp and use this as a little bit of a tab there. And then again, more collaging with stickers and stamps and things that I got um, from different pen pals. And then we've got a little tip out here. This is from Russia. And then this is a little envelope uh, that I just stuck in underneath there. And there's a little bit of sticker ephemera in there. And then this was fun again to work with the black and white. And this is a card from Denise. And then underneath here is a postcard that I had sent to myself. Um, actually, I sent it to my cat, Stella. <laughs> oh, that's a conversation for another day. The fact that I send my cats uh, postcards when I'm away. But I missed her. <laughs> uh, show of hands, anybody else send their pets postcards while they're away? Or maybe that's just me. And then just some random bits and pieces that had been included in Happy Mail. This one is from Russia again, from Xenia. And I couldn't resist using my Baba Yaga uh, rubber stamp here um, to help hold in the postcard. So that's just the envelope there. And her postcard gets tucked in underneath like that. We're almost at the end, my friends. Another card. So again, I was sort of working with the red and the yellow and the blue. So then this was some just a belly band I did here. And then to end the journal, because clearly things were getting right out of control, um, this is a card that I had found uh, from my granny. Sadly, she didn't date it, so I don't know exactly when I got it, but I saved it. And I thought it was just a nice way to, a nice sentimental way to end. Um, another envelope from Stephanie. And then on the back here, more sticker artwork from Stephanie. And a postcard from Australia. So my friends, that is the giant, huge, huge, huge Happy Mail junk journal. Um... I hope that that will be, on some level, inspiring for you to get out some of your own Happy Mail, maybe, that you have tucked away in a box and, you know, have some fun, get a little bit, I don't want to say more creative, but just maybe, in, I hope that it inspires you to just look at your Happy Mail maybe in a little bit of a different way and sort of be able to incorporate Happy Mail and all the cards and letters and envelopes with collage and you know adding some interesting paper in behind and really sort of embellishing their art with your art so to speak if that makes sense and I know that you know this is the kind of thing I'm going to look through a lot and I will have a lot of fun because not only am I remembering when I got the happy mail and who sent me the mail but also the joy that I had creating this junk journal and thinking about you know all the people that I met and that why they sent me what they sent me and when they sent it to me um so there's that one there and then like I said I just started this one here and so we'll see how this this sort of two signature thing works out. I, I still have a ton of Happy Mail that I haven't gone through yet. So there's more. Um, so here last night I was working on this and you can see that I was sort of spending more time color coordinating again and adding in stickers from little packets that had been included and different things that I've gotten over the last few years. And again, this was a gorgeous uh, envelope. Um, and I just, I cut off the bottom because she had written this on the back. So I cut it off and switched it so that it was the right way up. And then 
um, again, a card from Emma. And yeah, I don't know what else did I do here. Was doing some collage with blue and yellow, and then this was this is from Stephanie, and this was another postcard from Stephanie. I, so that just gets tucked in there. Again, from Suzanne. Some beautiful, beautiful artwork on the envelope, and then her letter, corresponding letter, and then this eventually is going to go here. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, I will do, if you're interested, I will do a journal with me video about, oh, that's going to get tucked in there, um, how and, you know, just, just the process um, of tearing up the envelopes, deciding what to keep, etc, etc. So I'm going to leave it there because I have rambled on for long enough. Um, thank you for watching, as always. I really, really appreciate you spending this time with me. I hope it will inspire you, like I said, to dig out your happy mail and to have some fun and get creative about how you're storing and memory keeping um, your happy mail. You know what I always say? Speak kindly to yourselves. Enjoy the journal process. If you like this video, please give it a little thumbs up. And until the next video, happy journaling, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. Mwah. Thanks again. Bye.